Attention, please. Eastern Airlines Flight 19, your holiday cruise to the emerald beauty of a Puerto Rican rainforest. Now ready for departure. Secure ship for sea. Make all preparations for getting underway. Aye, aye, sir. Horizons 1 is now departing. Our final destination today, the 21st century. That will make me happy, little orange girl. Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. W, w Radio. You're in for me. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 619, and together each week we will celebrate the magic of the Disney parks, movies, and more as I take you from the parks to the screens and everything in between on the podcast, my weekly live video on Facebook, community, books, audio tours, blog, and more. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and find everything else at www.radio.com. So romance isn't just for Valentine's Day and can be found almost anywhere, including Walt Disney World. And this week, we're going to look at our top 10 romantic places, spaces, and things to do in Walt Disney World, including some that might not be what you expect. I'll then share the answer to last week's trivia question of the week and pose a new challenge for your chance to win a Disney prize package. Then stay tuned to the end of the show for more updates, including how you can turn what you love into what you do, how, where, and why we can and should stay connected, your voicemails, and more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WW Radio Show. a confession. I am a hopeless, unapologetic romantic. I believe in fairy tale romances, the power of love, and not just the Huey Lewis song, that chivalry is not dead, at least not for me, nor will it ever be. I believe in giddy schoolboy and schoolgirl butterflies and that romance isn't and should not be limited nor focused just to one arguably potentially over-commercialized and sometimes yet worthwhilely expensive single day. But with Valentine's Day coming up, I think a lot of people start thinking about romantic things to do, oftentimes gentlemen, usually the morning of, places to go and ways to celebrate not just the day, but really relationships and romance itself. And so this week, I thought we would finally, literally, I have thought about this for years, look at our top 10 romantic places, spaces, and things to do in Walt Disney World. And when I think of romance, of course, the first name that comes to mind is, no, wait, that is, that is so very wrong. When I think of top 10s, I think of Tim Foster from Celebrations Magazine and Guide to the Magic. Wow, that was awkward. Well, I, I must confess I'm a little sad because I, when I think of when you threw this topic out, I went right to you. Me. This is going to be a really awkward show, you know? <laughs> going gonna be to be, so as much, if it's not already. It's going to be so much fun. And this is, like I said, this, this is a long requested show, is it not? It is. It is. And, and I think we've we've we've, we've passed over this a few times. Like we've we've alluded to it in other conversations. Um, well, sure. But never really got down to it. And, and look, like I said, Tim, I am a romantic. I am a very sentimental, not mental, emotional guy. <laughs> and everything that I said at the intro about romance and, and chivalry are true. Um, and, and you said like yourself, you know, you're a romantic guy. Have you ever yeah. done anything that you would considerly consider romantic that you are comfortable sharing? Don't make it weirder. Um, have you ever um, done anything romantic in Walt Disney World? Or do you want to save that for one of your top 10 entries? Uh, 
Yeah, I have, and I'll save it. There's a few things I'll talk about. And uh, yeah, I'll share them a bit later. You know, and, and I've been back and forth on, on this. And look, I, I say all the time, and, and this is really going to be proof of it, that you, the listener, Uh-oh. are my friend and Tim's. And I, I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to, I, I'm going to practice what I preach, and I'm going to trust you by sharing a, a story that has to do with romance in Walt Disney World. Um, I was, at one time, many, many, many years ago, <clears throat> engaged briefly, very briefly, uh, before uh, being engaged to the woman I am currently married to. Uh, and of course, I did it in Walt Disney World. It was in front of that castle cake it was not as i drew it up in my head at all it was not what you see in the romantic movies it lasted less than supersonic stitches supersonic celebration um (laughs) well i know it really was well anyway measured it doesn't matter anyway i did many of the quote-unquote romantic things that you're supposed to do right including proposing in front of cinderella castle sort of again didn't go as planned at all Oi. Whatever. <laughs> anyway but i thought it would be helpful and valuable to share some of the things you can do with someone that you like love or want to love next time you're in walt disney world or if you're listening and you're in walt disney world right now you can it's a great way to earn some quick points and there's some of these things you can do without a lot of planning and i will tell you tim because i know it makes you crazy that everything mm. on my list is not just romantic places to eat I, I thought that was almost a little bit too easy but i really wanted to come up with some things that will help you look like and be a hero or heroine to the one you are with or the one that you love or want to love. Now, you didn't eliminate dining entirely. I'm not an animal. Of course not. All right. I I just want to make sure. So, yeah. But I think these are also things, you know, we're, we're, we, we, we're talking about this now because Valentine's day is coming up, but these are things that I think you can and should do all year long. You can do it on a date night and, You know, we're going to talk about a bunch of different ways that you can get romantic in in Walt Disney World and and celebrate and and have fun in your relationship, um, including some that I think might be surprising, too. Again, we are aware of the current state of things and that COVID procedures, protocols, limitations, and even some activities are not currently available in walt disney world i'm still going to allude to some at least on my list because i i the hope is that when you are listening to this covid will be a thing of the past and things will be back to quote unquote normal and a lot of the things that you can do and take advantage of in walt disney world will be there and will be back but tim i am of all the top tens we have done in 16 plus years this is one that I am both intrigued and excited and remarkably frightened to hear what <laughs> your idea of romance and romantic things to do might be. So please favor us with your very first of what I'm sure will be many go with me here's. Well, this isn't a go with me here so much, but I was I was trying to figure out should I should I lead with this or save this for later, but since you talked about stories we could share, I'll, I'll kick it off with a story I had to share about something I did, like you back in the day, getting engaged. Though, as you know, I'm a single boy looking for love in a park and all by myself. But is it, Tim? This is not a dating love. app. Although, if you want to reach out, I, to Tim, I, I, I'm, can... just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm <laughs> just throwing it out there. Um, no, but back in the day, and actually, the the tip to be taken from this is if you are. Uh, If you're planning a special occasion like a surprise proposal or something like that, or a special anniversary celebration or something, um, I I did it this way. And I encourage everybody, if you are planning something or you're trying to plan something special, but you don't know quite what you want to do, 
Um, don't forget and don't be afraid to reach out to if you're uh, working with a travel planner, travel agent. Lou, you've got some great ones you work with. Um, or you could even probably call Disney directly. Um, in the, in my case, I reached out to a travel agent pal of mine who worked with Disney. Told him I wanted to do something. Had no idea what to do. They had all sorts of ideas. And, and Disney does have all kinds of things that you can do that you might not know about. So definitely ask if you're trying to do something. And in my case, what I wanted to do and the way it worked out was this was very proposal, not in front of Cinderella Castle and the birthday cake, which reminds me, I, that was one of my first trips to Disney when it was the birthday cake. And I'm wondering if in some weird multiverse way, I was standing next to you and you were doing this and who knew years later. Here we Trust are. me, I've knowing the details of my story as I do. I you, was not there. You were not the screaming family of children that were running and jumping all no. around me as I was trying to do it by no. what. And, never mind. It's OK. Well, that was the ruckus, though, going on. OK, <laughs> it, right, it was make, definitely a ruckus. <laughs> this this makes sense now. So anyway, the, 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 the way this happened, uh, this is the Grand Floridian. It was going to be a dinner. Now, the ruse that I was pulling was we were going to be dining at the Grand Floridian Cafe, which is up on my list of romantic restaurants, which we'll get back to. Um, wow. Unbe wow. <laughs> um, now, hey, what the surprise hey, was, I. <laughs> hey, hey. No, one, I'm sorry. Listen. Said one of. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. I didn't know we were going to be critical here, but that's okay. <laughs> I all right, I'll, I'll comment later. Anyway, the surprise was, so I explained I would like to do something special. Uh, one of the options that they had was we could arrange for a private dinner up on uh, one of the upper floor balconies, sort of overlooking the Magic Kingdom, but we could see the fireworks. And uh, so at the appointed time, we were in the lobby. And <laughs> to perpetuate the, uh, the ruse uh, even further, I actually went up to the to the hostesses at the Grand Floridian Cafe and s explained what I was doing and but she thinks we're going in here. So could you give me a pager just to make it look convincing? This is where we're waiting. And it's actually great when you talk to cast members and get them in on it because everybody's so happy and excited. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And we'll call you. We'll like we'll make it all sound really good. So we did that. Uh, we're waiting. And then our private butler wandered over. And uh, the surprise was, well, we're not going that way. We're going this way. And they did the whole nine yards. They had, I had a ring that I brought with me. They had taken care of uh, purchasing on my behalf a glass slipper, um, which they put the ring in, put it under a tray, ostensibly the dessert tray, brought it out, lifted it up. There it is written out chocolate. Fireworks are going off. It was a beautiful occasion. So, and again, one that I could only have done with the help of one, my travel people, friends, and Disney themselves. And they, I remember actually calling them quite a few times just to make sure everything was just so. They were absolutely wonderful, make sure everything was perfect. So it was a night I'll never forget. And that's that's my first tip to everybody. If you want to do something above and beyond, reach out and ask. There's all kinds of stuff you may not even know about was there. So, so I, I was expecting to be surprised, but not so pleasantly, Tim Foster. Oh, look at you being so romantic. And me. believe it or not, I, I did see. not expect you to have this on my list because I did have sort of this indulgent best overall bet you probably haven't done this yet dining experience in Walt Disney World and it involves a butler not yeah. Tim Curry from Clue but if <laughs> you really want to do something extraordinary and extravagant and indulgent there's a lot of different ways you can do that type of butler service so I know and again we're, we're sort of taking COVID out of the equation right now but at Grand Floridian, you can actually arrange for a private dinner at a number of different locations throughout that resort that comes with your own special menu and a private butler. And like you said, the cast members work uh, alongside you, whether you want to do one of the upper level terraces, do you want to 
uh, be over on the lagoon somewhere. And yes, it can get costly, but it also can be the, you know, the best of the best of the best of wonderfully romantic, memorable, like you want to leave a lasting impression on somebody doing one of these private dinners just for two. I know for years, and I don't know if they still do it anymore, you were able to do a private dinner for two at the terrace at the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Yes. I actually so, saw something about a wedding party that had like, not the wedding, but a bridal shower or something there. Yeah, that yeah, was, I mean, look, that's if, expensive. Though. Right. I but, mean, if, if yeah. and this is, and let's yeah. maybe, it's good that we get this one out of the way. Like, this is the indulgement. Indulgent. If money is no object, like, Disney can do it. You know, if you say, look, yep. I have a budget of this. What can you do? What can you do to wow me? Disney will wow you. <laughs> Disney will do things mm-hmm. that can knock your socks off. And if you want to have dinner for two, you know, after hours at an attraction, I'm sure they could make that happen. Um, you know, and the, so maybe it's, it's good that we sort of get this out of the way. And get I promise, that one out of the way. Yeah, we'll scale back. Um, including, well, I'm, I have a lot of things on my list that are actually free to do, too. I have, I have a few free things. But it was nice with it. The icing on the cake, though, proverbial icing on the cake, whether you're well, in our case, as we leave and the all the cast members are again, so wonderful. Congratulate Two, I just got engaged buttons that we could wear for the rest of the trip, which scored us even more free cupcakes and free dessert and free ice cream. Or if you're expensive. celebrating an anniversary, you can get a happy anniversary button or just, mar- you know, <laughs> that's the Those nice were expensive free cupcakes. So. <laughs> it, it depends on your point of view. Right. So. But it's worth it. Yeah. And look, I, I'm yeah. I'm the kind of person that if something and somebody is worth it, like I never begrudge spending the money on something that is going to be an amazing meal, an incredible trip, a, a, a wonderful memory, especially if it involves, you know, my kids or something like that. Um, you know, if I'm able to do it. So. Very good. Wow. So now I almost feel like, how do I follow that up? Um, <laughs> well, and, you know, I had to follow the birthday cake castle. So <laughs> give me a break. Stop bringing that up. It still it still gives me the um, I still give, get the heebie jeebies when I think about that. Oh, um, not really. It all worked out for the best. Yes, it did. So uh, here. OK, so I'm going to sort of take the idea of uh, we, we said that we're not going to talk about dining first. We will talk about dining first because you <laughs> don't necessarily have to do the full blown you know, stereotypical romantic dinner somewhere. And, and yes, we will get to them but i think that there's ways especially if you're going to walt disney world chances are you or both of you are disney enthusiasts and maybe you want to spend some time in in the parks without maybe don't want to do a full sit-down meal and look admittedly i am not a a big drinker at all so i'm going to uh i'm going to swap out you know and 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 you could do either or both what what i'm calling either like a tasting around the world, whether it is a wine tasting around the world, it is a culinary tasting around the world. I think something simple and romantic that you don't have to worry about overly planning is going to World Showcase. Like, especially if you do it and you time it just right and the weather is beautiful and the sun is just starting to set and you could do it on a weekday so it's not crowded. And you visit each pavilion and you sample a, a wine or a beer or a snack or a, a food item, if you prefer, from each of the country. So you almost can do these little wine and cheese plates or a beer and pretzel plate. or So you, you craft your own sort of mini menus as you go around because it, it's less about the food that you're eating and and what you're drinking than the time that you're spending together. The it, the experiential aspect of it is really what is the the romantic part. You know, holding hands in theory as you walk through a world showcase, having fun as you are expanding your culinary palate, maybe learning about some different wines and beers. It's simple and it's fun, and I think that too could be romantic without it being prohibitively expensive as well. 
What's your most romantic World Showcase pavilion? Wow, that's a great question. I think it depends how and where you spend it because there is something just inherently romantic about France at night with the music and Paris and it's it's this this city of lights and love. You know, we know my affinity for the Japan Pavilion. I, look, mm-hmm. I think one of my personal favorite alone spots could also be one of my favorite romance spots sitting up in Japan outside Katsura Grill all the way, <clears throat> excuse me, in the back corner with your back up to the bamboo forest with the uh, soft hanging lanterns above you and the waterfall in front of you and that view of the promenade and the music in the background is an incredibly romantic spot that you might not necessarily think of because it's because it's not this formal, you know, get dressed up, sit down dining location. You know, it's interesting because I was as I was going through my list trying to think of spots, I was I found myself repeating a lot of the same locations we would have talked about in you know, favorite places to relax or most magical places we've been, that sort of thing. And which I thought, no, I'm going to repeat myself. But then it, it rang true because these these places and the Japan Pavilion, my friend, no surprise on my list, too, as a place to be. Um, but, but I think the thing to take away from that is that these places are so special to us and relaxing and magical part of what makes a romantic place so romantic is you you sharing the the experience with that person that you love so it only makes sense that the the places we think of as the most magical relaxing and wonderful are those places i want to share with somebody so yeah whether i'm sitting alone in the japan pavilion or wandering through uh, France or the courtyard in the UK pavilion or whatnot. Um, it's, it's magical by yourself in a way, but just so much more when you're with somebody, of course. Okay. So where, <clears throat> what is next on your list in terms of romantic places? Well, I was things to do. I was walking. Well, we'll keep walking. Cause you kind of led me to that. Um, I, I rom- one of my favorite, just romantic activities, period, is just walking around, like you said, hand in hand, uh, at a not down Main Street as everyone's rushing out of the park, but in that quiet place off by yourself, invariably at night when the lights are out, the music is playing, the crowds are a little less. World Showcase was first up on my list of places to walk around. And I actually love walking around and done this a few times during the Flower and Garden Festival. Um, well, all the festivals with flower and garden because, hey, flowers. And it's free to smell the flowers. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, as uh, Disney's done, as we know, a better job. It's evening out the crowds throughout the year. But um, anytime you can be there when it's less crowded, that would be great. And we can all remember back in the day when you could go in March and April and it'd be not too crowded, not too hot yet. The flowers are out. And uh, that's a wonderful time to walk around. But I also like walking around Crescent Lake uh, by the world. They'd be the Epcot resorts, just walking along the boardwalk. No particular place to go. But in the evening, you can see the lights uh, playfully uh, dancing off the ripples in the lake. Oh, that's romantic. Um, I love, love, uh, one of my favorite places to walk, period, um, is that... uh, the walkway that leads under the bridge going to the international gateway, which is straight out of Ratatouille and walking around in Paris to me. Um, And best of all, if you time it right, you can uh, find yourself on that bridge, but on the top and uh, have a nice quiet place with just a few people around to watch the fireworks that evening, whether it was illuminations in days gone by or harmonious in years to come. That's a wonderful place um, to spend with somebody because, one, you have the spectacle of the fireworks. You have all of the the ambiance and the beauty of the resorts and the lights around you. But it's, it's in a not very crowded place. You're out of the park. You're away from the crowds, but you can still hear the music from 
the France Pavilion, and it all adds up to be one of my most favorite beloved locations in all of Walt Disney World that I really love spending with someone special. I love it. All walking sounds exhausting. Um, <laughs> well, or, or get, a Surrey, get a Surrey, get a Surrey bike. I, that, oh my gosh. And, it's, and, those hills no. are killer. It's it's no. like a it's like an endurance event for me doing that. No, but, you sit in the back, or or you <laughs> you distract enough that you get away. You kind of fake a pedaling motion once in a while, but you're not doing it. It's so romantic. Here, honey, you pedal. You pedal. Yeah, around and <laughs> yeah. Well, you did say something which actually leads me to something that that is is on my list multiple times. I'm going to sort of combine them here into one because I think. The water is mm-hmm. romantic. I, I love walking by the water, being on the water, sitting on a beach or a lake or dining waterside. And I think at Walt Disney World, something that is an overlooked experience and, and maybe even more so over the past number of years. Look, when Walt Disney World opened, it was billed as the vacation kingdom of the world, meaning that Disney wanted and and because it was only one park, you had a lot more time to really take advantage of the resort. And I think that it, it's starting to happen again where people are starting to spend more and more time. And one of, I think, the most wonderful ways and romantic ways to do that is by being on the water. And it's by renting a boat or renting a kayak or a canoe. There's a lot of different options that you have that you can either drive or control on your own or you could be taken out. So, for example, there are a number of different motorized boat options at Yacht and Beach Club, Polynesian, Grand Floridian, Contemporary, Fort Wilderness. Um, there are sea racers. There are those little uh, two-person boats. There are Boston whalers you could take out as well. There's also, I mean, if you really want to you know, go all out, you could rent the Grand One for a specialty cruise. We'll get back to that later on. But there's also canoe rentals and kayaks at Fort Wilderness. There are pon- t- pon- the, the Sun Tracker pontoon boats you can take out as well. And I think that there is something about doing that activity together, you sort of having control over the experience. We talk about things like immersive and interactive and us sort of not being passive observers, getting into your own boat and going around you know, Seven Seas Lagoon or Bay Lake or wherever it might be is such a great opportunity to do that in a much simpler form where you're not sitting, waiting in a queue to get on on an attraction to get off and sort of have that limited experience. You And look, and it's not that expensive at all. For example, the Sea Racers and these prices are object, obviously subject to change. A Sea Racer is like $30 for a half hour i think the the boston whaler is like 45 but the kayaks are like 13 dollars. the kayaks and the canoes are like 13 dollars at fort wilderness for an hour uh i think it's per adult so for like 25 bucks you know less than 30 dollars, you can go out for an hour kayaking having fun and just sort of spending that you know wonderful i don't want you know i i'm I'm not making fun of when I say, but you can, you can spend some of that simple bonding time together. And I think the water is a beautiful place to do it. I, yeah, I, I love being on the water, which is yes. Very romantic. Um, I was going to talk about fireworks, cruises and stuff. I have a story to share about that. Of course you do. Um, but before that, um, speaking of boats though, one of my favorite things to do, it has to do with boats and this one's actually free so <laughs> you don't have to pay for this although the cruises are fantastic if you can if you can arrange one or or like you say get a boat and go out on your own piloting around that's fun but if you don't have that available to you or if it's a last minute thing uh the launch boats at disney we've talked about so many times as one of our favorite things to do and there are there are lots of launch boats of various sizes and shapes, of course. My favorites, though, from a just immersing yourself in the magic of Disney and being in romantic uh, location would be the smaller boats, especially the ones that go between the Grand Floridian and the Polynesian and the Magic Kingdom. 
And similarly, the boats that go from uh, not the mad, not the Magic Kingdom to the Wilderness Lodge, but the ones that go from the Wilderness Lodge to the Contemporary to the campground, the ones that go in the circle. And they, these are smaller boats, so they're not the big, uh, you know, chugging big boats that everybody's crowded into. Uh, and as long as you're not going, you know, at the end of the day when there's, you know, 100 people waiting to get into your boat, if you do it at an off time, um, a lot of times you can get that boat. Hey, sometimes to yourself, I've been in that situation. Or if you leave very late at night, <laughs> that happens too. Um, and I think from going to the Magic Kingdom over to the Grand Floridian, that's that's my favorite boat route of all. But um, uh, from there, you can see, uh, you know, the lights of the Magic Kingdom and also the lights of the Grand Floridian and the and the Polynesian reflecting on the water. You see. Uh, uh, if you time it right, you can actually see the fireworks, um, which is one of those serendipitous moments. But uh, especially at night, uh, it doesn't take long for you once you leave the dock to feel like you are worlds away from everywhere, um, which is a truly astonishing thing to do when just moments ago you were shoulder to shoulder with 10,000 of your closest friends on Main Street watching the fireworks. But getting on a cruise, uh, one of those even the launch boats get you far away from everybody and not too long, especially the wilderness lodge boats, especially at night. If you go behind discovery Island and you're out by yourself and you can't see anything and it's scary. And, uh, hey, but that's romantic too. Hold my hand. I'm scared. You know, that's a, that's a good moment. Um, the, but the story I'll tell that this is one you can't plan, but this, yeah, yeah, it's kind of, uh, I don't know if this is disingenuous of me to say, but one of the, great romantic things I would suggest to people is hard to suggest because it's those not planned moments, you know, the ones that you just happen to luck into, but you'll remember them for the rest of your life. So it's kind of a fair thing to not fair thing to throw out there. Cause it's not like you can plan for it, but, but in this case, for example, um, we were at the grand Floridian, the grand Floridian is going to come up quite a bit in this show, Lou, I'm warning you now. Um, but we went out the back. We went to Gasparilla's, got a couple cupcakes, and went out. We were just going to watch the fireworks. Um, but a boat pilot wandered by. And uh, if, if you don't remember, if you, when you're outside of Gasparilla's, you're right near the, the boat docks. And he asked how we were doing, and we were doing fine. And he remarked, I have to do a take this boat out for a little maintenance run. How'd you like a fireworks cruise? Are you serious? Yeah, I have to go anyway. I got blankets. Okay, so uh, we went. He had another couple sitting there. So just totally random, out of the blue, can't plan for it. But we got a personal fireworks cruise. We went out the Seven Seas Lagoon, stopped in the middle, watched the whole show. It was great. So th that it's, it's not a fair thing for me to bring up because it is one of the most romantic things I've done, but it wasn't one I could have planned for or, or, you know, figured out how to do in advance short of renting a boat, like you had mentioned, but. Um, so clearly right when you date Tim right Foster, time, romantic fortune shines upon you. Things happen. Things yeah. happen. You know, I, and I was going to, there was one I wanted to include. I was going to mention it separately, but I think it probably makes more sense to include it here. As long as we're talking about boats and telling boat stories, look at this not so subtle transition over to the boat house. And I'm not right. going to talk about having dinner there, but there's not one, but two different boat rentals that you can do there. One are the little amphicars, those little sort of 50s looking cars that are right on the the boat ramp right next to Boathouse where you can fit as many as three people in there and they take you on a little tour of the lake behind Boathouse and, and sort of the waterway that goes down by um, Paddlefish and then across to um, uh uh, Saratoga Springs Resort, and you can book a tour. It's like $125, I think, for up to three people. But if you really want to sort of turn the romance up to 11, Tim mm. Foster, as clearly yes. I know you like to do, yes. you can also book the Venezia, which is mm. a 40-foot, breathtakingly beautiful, elegant 40-foot Italian water taxi. 
and the boathouse's captain and crew will take you out on a journey through the waters of Lake Buena Vista and the scenic riverway. Again, I'm a romantic. You can do it at sunset. It's amazing. And they'll bring out chocolate-covered strawberries, a champagne toast. You can do, you know, other food as well. So if you want to do something for your anniversary and en- listen, the the knee the 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 castle engagement thing has been done been there done that <laughs> you want to do an engagement that sh- he she will never forget the venezia again not the least expensive thing that you could do but relatively speaking a 3 hour rental is $500 so comparing against some of the other the cost of some of the others it is an indulgent thing, but again, it's something that you can only do here, um, and that doesn't include food and drink. You can add that on. I have actually done this in the past. Um, I actually took the speakers out for Momentum last year, two years ago. I don't know. We went out on on Venezia. Um, I was on it once before. It, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing, and it is a truly memorable, special, special event that you can do and you can find out more and you can book it uh, by going to the boathouse or, or going to the boathouse's website. I can't wait. I'm still waiting for my first time to go to the boathouse. I promise. I Listen, I can't promise you the Venezia, but I can promise you boathouse. Okay. Well, we did have dessert there. Wait, I forgot about that. What did you forget? You did take me to the boathouse. So what you're saying you're to off him the hook. is that all these years that you've been complaining that you're I've never taken hook. you there, you yeah. now are admitting that I did. You did. And not only that, because you're you. I don't know what that means. <laughs> America's guest. <laughs> you were able to score the entire new dessert menu in one shot for us to enjoy. So It was a tasting. It was a tasting. Was a tasting. <laughs> you had to roll me out of there, but it was a tasting. Listen, if you roll out a boathouse, it means you did it right. You did it right. <laughs> yes. So we love our time on the water, um, time on or in the water. Where else will you go next? Or is it, um, or is it, or is it technically my turn? I don't know. Uh, I think it's technically your turn. Okay. So I think whether you are visiting Walt Disney World and staying at a resort, or if you're local and want to do something special and have a little staycation, I think there are, as we're talking about, ways that you can plus your experience. And I think one of the things to do is, it's not necessarily where you'll stay, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, but things you can do in your room as well. And Disney Floral and Gifts has an incredible array of very romantic in-room surprises, touches, flowers, and gifts that they can bring and have even ready for you when you check in at your hotel. Anything from cakes that could be personalized and decorated to gift baskets, floral arrangements. They'll do a rose petal turndown service with champagne and cheese and chocolates, and you can get embroidered Mickey robes. I mean, you really can take the in-room celebration to whatever sort of level that you want, whether it's something as simple as, you know, a, a, a small floral arrangement, the bed of roses with champagne, balloons, whatever it might be. And again, you're limited by your and Dizzy's imagination and budget, but you can have cakes delivered um, and they have a a number of allergy-free items as well too. Um, So I think doing something in your room, having that surprise, right? It's about sort of that surprise and delight where especially if you have that incredibly exciting check-in moment and you're just thrilled to be there, but like Disney, you're able to exceed expectations and the door opens and those that balloon bouquet is there or is there's this Valentine basket with chocolates or a dozen or a dozen dozen roses, whatever, you know, fits for you. I think some of the, the floral and gift things that you can do 
And you can just search for Disney Floral and Gifts. Uh, and I've worked with them in the you know in the past, and they are just not just only wonderful to work with, but incredibly creative and will make that trip, that staycation, that night, that moment in even more special than you could have imagined. Yeah, that's I love that. And that that goes back to when I had the dining experience if like working with Disney. Like I said, they have so many great so many great ideas and they're so creative. They'll think of things you could never think of, which is great. I do I do remember once though being surprised in my room by a a a cold I don't, I don't know if this was a romantic gesture, but it's a nice cold case of Dr. Pepper soda, like a 12 pack. I, I sent that to you. That was my, you, that was my gift. To you, you did. You did sent the card get lost. <laughs> yeah. The card. No, I knew it was from you, but uh, yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Um, my next one is a little different. So uh, I have no idea if this is still something you can do. Um, not even at with everything going on, but I don't even know going forward. But one of the, and again, I did this, and it was very, a very, very romantic thing, um, was a horse-drawn carriage sleigh slash sleigh, um, which you could do over at the Fort Wilderness Campground, and you could do. They had the haunted hayride versions. You could do. They also had Christmas ones, which is the one I did. And again, Lou, I have no idea this year, obviously not, but I don't even know going forward if this is still something you can do or will know. I don't know if you know for sure. I believe that the carriage rides might still be on hold. I I, maybe well, hopefully come back as of as of this recording. Um, And you can do this. uh, I haven't done this, but correct me if I'm wrong. This is something you can also do over at Port Orleans as well, Mm -hmm. or you could do. Um, but anyway, the one the the one we did. So this was a this was at Christmas, and uh, it was a, a horse drawn sleigh ride sleigh ride with no snow. Hey, it's Florida. It's Disney. It's magic. Um, but a, in this case, what you did, you went around the campgrounds at Christmas, which was very cool because this uh, all the people that are staying there all have great traditions and decorations of decorating their own cap campsites in their own way. So it's, it's like you're going around your neighborhood or going uh, that uh, like we have a tradition at Christmas. We always go on Christmas Eve or, you know, that weekend nearest to it. We'll just drive around random neighborhoods just to look at Christmas lights. But this is the Disney version of it with the clip clopping of the horses in front of you. You're, you're a friendly uh, driver who every time i think of him i just can't help but thinking of kramer on seinfeld when he was driving <laughs> susan's parents around but that that's another story but uh um, <laughs> you don't feed the horse chili that's all i'm saying don't don't beef <laughs> bo- beef beefarino beef is not a good yeah not a good what do you feed that thing um but uh, <laughs> unless you get the wrong idea that did not happen on the sleigh ride but um it's so it being christmas time if you happen to hit it at the right time, it's usually cool. I know it's Florida. It could still be, you know, 87 degrees in December, but I know for us, it was chilly enough that we had, you know, they have blankets and hot chocolate and all that. And you can do the whole, uh, do the whole thing upright. Um, and, and it was, it was fantastic. Cause you're, it's just the two of you, you're, you're off deep into the campground. So you're away from everybody away from the crowds all you see all the christmas lights around you're under you know cozying under the blanket it's nice and chilly so that was a very romantic thing i could do and again not sure if you can, well it's obviously not christmas anymore but hopefully next year um at christmas and at halloween although i think halloween hasn't been going on for a while mm-hmm. i'm not sure um but always check cuz they're available like they can also they have horse various horse uh, carriage and riding activities over at Port Orleans as well. Um, so if you like that kind of thing, um, that's available um, at least at those two places and very romantic. It was especially on my if you list. Bring, especially if you bring along some chocolate covered strawberries. Wow. Look at you, Tim. Look, look at, at you. you I, so listen, 
You're like a walking Tinder ad right now because I just <laughs> I can hear the swooning going on. It was on my list, and I agree. When it comes back, it's something um, simple and wonderful and elegant to do. Much like what is next on my list, which is the afternoon tea at Grand Floridian. Oh um, yes, I think this, and this can be both a romantic and non-romantic experience. However, you you choose to enjoy it. Uh, I actually did a live review of this back on show four thirty five with a longtime friend of mine, Emma from the United Kingdom, and between the atmosphere, the elegance, the music, the simplicity, the finger sandwiches, the the tea, the cakes, the scones, all on this wonderful traditional afternoon tea platter. Um, and again, it has this wonderful sliding scale, really, of, of how much you might want to do it. I think that the smallest amount might have been like $35, like for a certain thing, but you could then add champagne to it. You can do one that includes all the sandwiches and scones and caviar and, and accoutrement, as you will, uh, with your choice of pots of tea. Either way, it was, uh, we sat there for a couple of hours. It was so simple, yet it, it felt so fancy and indulgent, you know, you it's one of these things that you can do obviously in the afternoon. And if you want to dress for afternoon tea with someone that you like or love, you can do it. Or if you want to come from the park and go in, either is perfectly acceptable. The food was delicious. I love the little cucumber sandwiches and that they have like this uh, sweet curry chicken and little egg salads. Ugh. So nice. I need to go back and do it again. Um, Again, I I, I did not go in in a romantic context, but it is a very, very romantic, wonderful, and and I think also overlooked thing to do for potentially not a huge amount of money if you don't want to spend it. Well, let's spend some more time in the Grand Floridian because actually one of my questions I was going to pose to you, much like yes, I will go with you to. Thank you. You know, I think we're going to do, wait, I think one, I just had an idea. I want to go We're going to do an afternoon tea. Well, no, I was going to give it away as like a contest prize. Oh, man. Like I'll take a, like I'll take a I mean, that's that's wonderful, yes. And you can't win. Oh, wait, maybe we'll all go like while you're there. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to wait that long, but But we can go again while you're there. Whenever that will be again, but... uh. (laughs) All right, so I'm sorry. We're, we're staying at the Grand Floridian. <laughs> we're staying at the Grand Floridian. Well, your question, because I asked you what you thought the most romantic world showcase pavilion was. How can you choose? Um, but speaking of resorts, what would you say is the most romantic resort? And really only two come to mind for me. But you, you might have some honorable mentions. So but I think we literally could do a top 10 romantic resorts at Walt Disney World. Because we I, could. I do not agree that there's only two that come to mind. I was hoping you wouldn't. So I'm curious. What, <laughs> uh, on your list is Grand Floridian, and what was the other one, yes. Captain Romance? Well, for me, the, the Wilderness Lodge is the other. Okay. For a variety of reasons. But um, but like you mentioned, there, any any of the resorts can be romantic in the right setting, of course. So, um, But while we're talking about the Grand Floridian, since we're there already, I had a couple other items on my list that revolved around that resort. So we we might as well just do it all in one shot here. Um, One thing I was trying to think of was as far as restaurants go, and when we do get to dining, what my uh, answer would be for the most romantic restaurant. And I will preface this by admitting I have not been asked nor have taken anybody to Victoria and Albert, so that's not on my list, but certainly would be up there. But um, me answering that question, I would stick with the Grand Floridian and go Narcosis or the Grand Floridian Cafe. And I think the Grand Floridian Cafe, just uh, not being price or anything, but it's just, it's so beautiful. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty wide open, so it doesn't take much, especially if you go at kind of an off time to 
be sitting right by the window. And of course, you're surrounded by the Victorian decorations and the elegant place settings and the, and the wonderful, wonderful food. Um, and a, a server that may very well sing you a special anniversary song if he, he mentioned that's the case. I forget his name. I would tell you to ask for him, but he's there. He's a good guy. Um, but also at the Grand Floridian, uh, just sitting in the lobby, when you're talking about what can you do romantically that you didn't plan ahead for, you didn't reserve that cruise, you didn't plan this dinner six months ahead of time. If you simply just going to the Grand Floridian lobby mm -hmm. and relaxing, listening to the piano player, listening to the orchestra, um, uh, if it's Christmas, looking at the Christmas tree and the gingerbread house. Um, but again, if you go, you know, hopefully you can get there. It's not overly crowded. Get a nice place to sit and just relax. And you can spend so much time there. Even if you're going to be dining at the cafe or in Arcosis or Citricos or wherever, um, going ahead of time, you know, an hour or a half hour ahead of time and just relaxing is, is uh, great because it's obviously a very beautiful romantic resort just how it's decorated and all the things you can look at. The other thing that's and actually I was going to ask you, this is another question. If you're there, particularly I feel like in the afternoon more so you may witness some romance playing out in front of you as a wedding party comes down the stairs for their photos accompanied by Mickey and Minnie in their, in their finest wedding attire. Um, or uh, we were there once and we saw an impromptu in the middle of the lobby ball with princesses and their princesses in which everybody could join in. So um, you never know what you might um, happen upon if you're sitting there. So, um, and then finally shopping, it, it, window shopping. Um, and the Grand Floridian again is one of my favorite places. Of course, uh, shopping at the jewelry store on Main Street USA and the Emporium is nice too. But uh, you know, there's uh, there can be a lot of people in there, and you may be a little hot from walking around the parks. But if you're if you're just relaxing, say you're going for dinner at the Grand Floridian, for example, or lunch, you can go shopping. Um, so wait, I, I, listen, I, I as your friend, I have to stop yes. you and I have to help you. Because what would I do? I have never seen somebody gain and lose points so fast. What happened? As you did. You What'd went I and I quote, I'm going to have I'm going to have the stenographer read this back from the. Oh, no. Transcript. Oh, no. I feel bad now. What you said, go shopping. You, we can go shopping. Take her shopping. Window shopping. There's a huge difference between taking somebody shopping well, and then disappointing. <laughs> like, no, no, honey. I Put that ring down. I meant window shopping. Big difference. That's not what I meant. Wow. But I wanted kill. to be clear. I All wanted right. to be clear. <laughs> no, browsing around. No, I we've had many, uh, in, like in advance of a dinner or something like that, just going around, sticking to the Grand Floridian, going to shops, whether or not we're buying anything, but going into like Basin White. This is something I always mm -hmm. to go to Basin White, try out, get some of that sugar scrub and, you know, wash. It, it sounds silly, but if you're both doing it, it's it's a little elegant. It's a little fancy. It's kind of neat. You go over to the other shops and look at things like wishful things. Like if you were going to pick me out one, which one would you pick? And then you play that game. But then the next day you pick it up on the sly and you bring it to the next dinner. You see where I was going with that? Now I do. That was now a nice, you're, was a nice see, you're ruining. See, there's, 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 there's a, there's a. I don't want to say a plan because that sounds devious, but it, it's all for it's all for good. Don't I like worry. the recovery. But the whole, but the whole, ex basically the whole experience at the Grand Floridian, top to bottom, the monorail, the doors, <laughs> everything else, and cuddling up by the fireplaces on the upper levels of the Wilderness Lodge. We'll throw that in there. So, you know, I was actually going to piggyback on that because I do have a list of romantic resorts and rooms. But you know what, Tim? I do want to save this All right. All as right. a separate top 10 because I have a few in there that I think not only might surprise you, but you mm. might not even know exist. Interesting. Because there are, and I agree that 
any resort you – look, and, and part of the takeaway of this whole thing is going to be you can make your trip romantic without having to specifically plan or pay for anything to make it romantic on your own. And I think that holds true for your resort as well. There's a lot of things that you can do. Surprises. Look, I'm, I'm and, and I know I drive my family crazy with this. I love surprises. Like I love surprising people, whether it's with a gift or just something unexpected. Like that could be something simple and romantic that you do, right? Bring some things that you purchased at home so you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to sneak away. And every day, you know, have a little surprise for them when they wake up with maybe a clue as to some place that you're going, somewhere that you're eating, a little trinket or a little item that that gives a hint of what is to come from the next day, someplace else that you might go. I, I love those little things that make not just your your an, an event memorable, but it makes Every day, something that they're going to look forward to, like, oh, what does he or she have planned next? And it's not about the amount of money that you spend. It's the thoughtfulness, I think, that you put into it that matters most to people. At least that's what I hope for. I hope that it's I, a thoughtfulness. I love that idea. I told See, now you. I got, now I got all these new ideas. I told well, you. I'm a, to I'm a rom- romantic kind of guy. So. Oh, nobody, nobody ever doubted that for a minute. And wait till I tell you, I'm try- I'm hoping that you don't say what I think is potentially one of the most romantic things you can do for last. And if well, you steal I, it, so be it. So be well, it. to be fair, I'm kind of at the end of my list. I'm, I'm kind of ending with something just sort of silly and free, but why not? Well, that's what I'm going to do. It, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go for okay. something silly and free because that's exactly where I was. I am. Uh-oh. I am. A simple person. Some people might call me a simpleton, whatever. And I do believe that you can have some of the most romantic, memorable moments by exchanging a glance or an embrace, keep it G-rated kids, a a Mm -hmm. hug, wherever it is, or just a moment. And I look, I am, like I said, I'm a romantic. I think that there is something incredibly, wonderfully romantic about trains. I, I don't know why. Oh. And whether it's a w- ride on the Walt Disney World Railroad, just a trip to nowhere, just riding around in circles, enjoying the views, the breeze in your hair, just sort of sitting there together talking. I, I consider that the TTA, the, the people mover, I consider I, that to be. A, you took you took my. You sorry. Took my, um, I consider the Skyliner. It's sort of it. They're air rails, right? It's. I think the Skyliner is incredibly romantic. And right now, and don't make this weird. Right now, because of COVID, you, there, it's actually even more so because they. It's only one party per Skyliner vehicle, which means that you can enter a vehicle and do the two different loops, and you have it to yourself. Again, just uh, it's, hold hands, whatever, keep it. But it, especially at <laughs> night and at sunset, it is incredibly romantic. And you know what, too? And I just thought of this. Speaking of, of riding the rails and trains, <clears throat> I did this a couple of times as a kid. Amtrak has the, um, the, the I don't know what it's called, the, the, the something liner. That goes from, I think it's like Virginia to not far from Orlando. And it's an, and it's an auto train. So if you want to sort of drive your car, they put it on the train and then you and your car and your family, your the person you're with, whomever, you get sort of to experience the, you know, Eastern seaboard to a certain degree by train and getting there really is half the fun. And it sort of extends that simplicity of a train ride um, just and I think you mentioned it too, Tim, something simple like sitting on rocking chairs, whether it's at Wilderness Lodge, Fort Wilderness, Animal Kingdom Lodge has a ton of incredibly romantic places or even just sitting out in Liberty Square on um, there's that those two rocking chairs on the side of the of Hall of Presidents that you can sit on all of those things. Tom Sawyer Island, the same thing. All of those things are, are simple and free, and they are moments that you can create without having to spend a dime. I love it. I'm going to have to check out that train. 
that might be a possibility. Um, I was going to kind of carrying on that you took the TTA, but I'm going to talk about the TTA a little more because just on its simplest basic level, I was trying to think of if you're, if you're at Disney with that special someone, and again, short of all the extravagant dinners and plans you could do, just in terms of riding attractions, I was trying, what, what are the most romantic attractions? And I think every time we, we contemplated doing this shortest show, I think that was always the first question, like, where, where's the best cuddle spot on what attraction? <laughs> um, and I was thinking about it, and I, I have kind of words. The, the ones I would think of, the thing they would have in common is that you're sitting, they're slow moving rides, and they're long. Obviously, I don't think, I don't know how romantic you can get on Expedition Everest, say. Now, I don't know if holding hands out of sheer fright counts, because that would be me. Romantic is probably not on the top of the list of things I'm feeling at that moment. But on the TTA, because that was one of my most romantic attractions, but it's it's one of those you can, uh, especially, I hope you, hopefully you can still do this. If it's not that crowded, uh, you can you could even ride it multiple times. There's never a way to get on, so you don't even have to worry about this is going to be romantic, but we do have to wait an hour in the queue to get there. But once you get out of the of Rocket Tower Plaza, and we've talked about this so many times with the TTA, you're off on your own. Um, two of you in a car. Confession, as soon as we leave the station, I take my shoes off and kick them oh, up. So dude, you could play geez. a little footsies there. Don't, oh, don't, st- all right, stop it. Don't tell anybody you did that. But um, uh, especially at night, especially at Christmas, um, I remember many a time being at a very Merry Christmas party, riding the TTA. So not only is it magical TTA, it's magical TTA at Christmas where you can see the dream lights on the castle. You can see all the lights in Tomorrowland. Um, And even better when it's not that crowded, every once in a while you get that not so rare opportunity. Not only is it just the two of you in the car, it's the two of you in the whole train that leaves the station. Mm -hmm. And that's happened a few times. And that's really cool because then you're, you're really truly off on your own. This, it's like you're, it's like your own personal tour that you know you might have ordinarily paid a lot for at Tomorrowland. It's just you two, but you have it all to yourself. Oddly enough, I I thought, and maybe this is an odd if people hear it. I had a vote for the haunted mansion as being mm-hmm. a nice romantic as you buy yourself. It's scary. Hold my hand, I'm scared. But it ticks off those things. It's just the two in your car. You're not with a bunch of other people. It's stark. It's long. Um, you know, it's not like like something like Peter Pan's flight where, yeah, you're alone, but it's sober before you know it. This is nice and long. And if, if, if you uh, have an affinity for Halloween, and a lot of people do, that makes it an even more special place and even more romantic and spooky, shall we say, during Halloween or a not so scary Halloween party. Um, so the question to you, Lou, what would you nominate as your most romantic attraction? Again, keep it G-rated. Keep it G-rated. Remember, remember. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm a snuggler, right? So yes, this very are. much is in my wheelhouse. Uh, don't say, of course you are. Stop it. Um, so there are a few. Like I ha- like I think, I think Pirates is one. I think Peter Pan's Flight is one. You've got you've got that pirate ship all to yourself. Spaceship is. Earth yeah. is oh, another yes. one. Yes. Navi River Journey. Mm-hmm. Again, you're on the water. I was going to say living with the land. Uh, but well, to a certain <laughs> degree, <laughs> if you get a boat all by yourself, it could be. But I think Peter Pan's flight, you know, those those attractions, Haunted Mansion, very much high on the list. Um, yeah. Attractions where it's just the two of you in a vehicle um, and you're you're able to sit together and and, you know put your arm around each other or whatever it is it inherently makes those attractions romantic. I like it. My cat's wandering in. He's got some things to say about this, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was trying, I was trying to think of other attractions and I forgot. Yeah. Spaceship earth. Definitely too. I, you know what? I, I remember romantic nights. One more quick story was the first time 
I mean, told you this, Lou, so many times. So the first time I visited Epcot was at was in the evening. It was an October evening. We were at the Magic Kingdom. Not, and actually, I was so new to this, I didn't realize that monorail went over to Epcot, and we found out it did. So away we go. But um, it was, you know, it was at it was in October, so it was cool. There was hardly anybody there. Epcot was sort of still newish at that point, so everything was. Um, super clean world like uh, the original imagination world motion there was all still there music emanating from the shrubbery it was fantastic but any of the attractions in there kind of kind of ticked off those check boxes nice and, and slow just you it's you know five ten maybe 15 minutes uh, whether it was imagination or world of motion or spaceship earth like you said um uh, or even the seas at that point um you know, so all of Epcot was nobody there. <laughs> um, El Rio del Tiempo. OK, so I, I as I was looking through because I, I don't have a lot on my list left either. Uh, I, I do have obviously some restaurants. I'm going to save those for I think those there's a top 10 romantic restaurants in Walt Disney World that oh, yeah. we can do. Because I think there there are many, including some that I think are unexpected. And number one, it, this is going to sound like one of those clickbait, clickbait articles. Number one yeah. on my list will surprise you because it will. <laughs> it might. And then again, it might not. But there's a few that I think are, are incredibly romantic, just like there are romantic resorts or romantic rooms even that you could ask for at certain resorts. So I will save those um, for another top 10 which we can do maybe very soon uh, i want to just i'm going to quickly mention a couple of honorable mentions before i hit what i think might be one of the possibly the best of the best of romantic things that you can do in walt disney world so earlier tim you talked about taking a walk right taking a walk yeah. taking a hike i think there's a lot of different places that you can do that, whether it's the boardwalk, the resort trails, Fort Wilderness, like you said, even some of the quote unquote running trails between like Old Key West and Saratoga and Disney Springs are really nice. I think you can take romantic walks in the parks. I think the Gardens in World Showcase is one. The Maharaja Jungle Trek, especially oh, if you yes. get some of those uh, that nice weather and, and the right time of day. So many of the resorts have wonderful grounds that are meant to be wandered and explored, especially some of the larger resorts that are a little bit more spread out. Um, I am not an athlete. I am an athletic supporter. So I, <laughs> I, but you like, okay. I think miniature golf, it, it's some, it's almost like that teenage romance thing to do, but it can be so much fun and so romantic. So an evening or a morning at winter Summerland or Fantasia gardens, could be something that is fun and romantic as well. Um, it does not have to be, you know, the flowers and the champagne and, and the strawberries. Uh, look, I think you can, I think there's a lot of places that can be romantic if you approach them that way, whether it's the Liberty Square River boat or to the opposite of your point, I think you can stroll down Main Street USA and have it be something simple and romantic to do together i think sort of romance oh, sure. is yeah. where you could make it if you go to animal kingdom lodge the starlight safari is one of i think the most special and unique things that you can do as you go at night and you're given night vision goggles and see i think it's like 30 different species of african wildlife i know they did it they did nighttime safaris in in animal kingdom too i don't i think those are currently on hold um, as well. Um, but I, what I think is the number one thing on my list to do is easy. It's romantic. It's unique, especially right now. It can be private ish is not in a, you don't even need a park ticket for it hmm. and you don't need to be staying at a specific resort. Hmm. It's characters in flight at Disney Springs. Oh. Did you know it's the world's largest tethered helium balloon? I did not know that. Let's see that. 
full of useless knowledge. So <laughs> the gondola is this 20 foot diameter um, basket that it enclosed basket. And look, if you're, if you're afraid of heights, I am not the biggest fan of heights as well. You feel so safe and so secure because you can't go anywhere and the balloon can't go anywhere. So I never had any of that fear. Although I do acknowledge that, that for many people it does exist while the gondola can hold up to, I think 25 or 30 people, especially I've noticed over the last number of years, it's not, especially during off times, it's not often crowded. It's not often being used because there's not a line of people. So Depending on what, look, if you go on a Tuesday at 11 o'clock, chances are you're going to have that balloon all to yourself. If you're going to go at the end of a night, maybe after a romantic dinner in Disney Springs, <coughs> Boathouse, and <laughs> then you have a surprise, you think that you're walking to the buses or back to your car, and then you hook a right and you walk over to Characters in Flight, and you have this reservation for the balloon for just the two of you. The views are spectacular. It's not even that. It's just, it's that simplicity of the balloon ride. And it's only $20 for adults. Kids, I think, I think kids are like 15. But it is such a unique view. And you can see for like 20 miles all around. Like you can walk all around the basket. You don't feel cramped at all. You should look at pictures or videos. I did this. A couple of times I haven't been in years I, I want to do again but timing it just right um, it is it is just such a simple romantic thing and if it's just the two of you and obviously there's you know the pilot in there as well um, it is a wonderful wonderful very overlooked experience at Walt Disney World that ticks all the boxes like I said you don't have to book this six months in advance. It can be private. It is unique. It is romantic. Um, it's something you could do together and it does not cost you a lot. It's it's $40 for two people. I love it. I, I am a little afraid of heights, but, but, but you've convinced me. I think I can handle it. And it's even perfect. Like, oh, you're a little afraid of heights. Come here. Let me give you a little hug and a cuddle. Oh, right. Oh, I mean, oh. I'm not saying that's that's why you do. Oh. I mean, it's make it's make sure it's obviously completely consensual. But you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm assuming that if you're there together, um, yeah, <laughs> that that is not an yeah. issue. Um, the, the one last thing I'll just add is that I think the commonality to all of this was, um, wherever it is, whether it's a restaurant, resort, an attraction, or whatever, um. Like for me, the romantic part was being just being able to share that magic moment, whatever it was, with that someone special, especially when to both of you, it's that Disney special moment that means that much more to you. Because, uh, you know, we're those we're Disney people, but this means a lot to us. And it is it is really special to share those moments with someone. Um, it's also cool. And the last thing. I will put on this list is if you get to both experience something new for the first time that you're both looking forward to, and not even just an attraction or something, but uh, for example, I remember the first time going into Pandora at night uh, with somebody. And not only was I experienced experiencing this for the first time, but it was so beautiful and magical that we've talked about separately. Um, but being able to share that experience with someone, to who is just as in awe and mesmerized as you are. And you're both taking in this incredibly magical experience together is really cool too. So again, that's, I mean, you have to kind of plan ahead to be there when something opens, but uh, being able to experience something together for the first time is also pretty cool because it's not just sharing the moment, but you're discovering the moment together and it'll be that moment that you'll remember for the rest of your lives because you did it together and you'll never see this, thing for the first time again like i'll never i will never have another first time i was at pandora moment so being being able to share that with someone makes it extra special yeah look and as an extension of all the things that we're saying you know especially if you've been with somebody a long time or you've been married a long time or you're worried about 
you know, budget and things like that. You know, that's why I wanted to really have a wide spectrum of things that you could do for free and things that if you wanted to celebrate and indulge. Mm-hmm. And look, to your point, Tim, about this place, this experience together being special, even if you are married and you've been married for years and the romance is gone, there's nothing that stops you from proposing again. Mm-hmm. Maybe you didn't have the wedding, it's what maybe that you want, where you didn't honeymoon in Disney, where you found this Disney love after. There's nothing that says that you can't go and find or make your special place, whether it's in front of now the non pink castle cake thing, <laughs> if it's, you know, in front of a favorite attraction. There's nothing, and you don't need another ring, you don't need another celebration, you don't need any of that kind of stuff. It's just like what we're talking about it's it's proposing your love it's sort of reinforcing that and forgive me for being all you know like i said at the, at the outset um as as idealistic and romantic about it but i think that there is something about making that moment of getting down on one knee looking up into the eyes of somebody that you love and then sort of professing that love especially if it's in a place like Walt Disney World or Aulani or a Disney cruise or Disneyland, wherever it might be, because now you have that moment, that place, that thing. And to all the things that we talked about, it doesn't matter what you do to celebrate, you know, Valentine's Day, whether it's in Walt Disney World or anywhere. It's about the time together. But when you are Walt Disney World, it's about sort of making those memories in what I would argue maybe is not just the most magical place on earth. It's not just the vacation. It's one of the most romantic places on earth as well. But I want to know from you, my friend, our friend, who's listening here with us, hopefully jotting down ideas or making quick phone calls for last minute plans. If you're in Walt Disney world, tell me what you think the most romantic thing you can do, you should do, or you have done in Walt Disney World is share your story. You've already done it, so it's okay. Or maybe something that you would love to do when you find that special someone. What is your perfect romantic day and night look like in Walt Disney World? What is the thing that you hope someone would one day do for you? And there's a number of different ways you could let us know. I think the best way is for us to tell us in your own voice. Call the voicemail. I will play it on the air at 407-900-9391. That's 407-900-WDW1. You can also go, I'll post this on our group on Facebook. It is the WDW Radio Clubhouse. It is fun and family friendly of course free and a very warm welcoming place share your story share your idea there Uh, or you can email me just lou at www.radio.com or share it on social and let me know and you know what else i think is an incredibly listen if you don't know what to get her or him for valentine's day and you're looking for the ultimate romantic gift Look no further than not your service merchandise catalog, but go to celebrationspress.com because it's literally the gift that keeps on giving all year long. That it is, Lou. That it is. I feel like I'm quoting Christmas Vacation right now. (laughs) But the, the big news, Lou, the big news is we're happy, so proud to announce Celebrations Magazine is back in print. And we are so excited. Enter dramatic music. So we are so excited. We've been working really, really hard. So yes, we're, we're going to kick things off. What better way to kick things off than with a special commemorative Walt Disney World 50th anniversary gala issue, which we're putting it together now. So we're very excited about that. It's out. It's available. We love everybody to come check it out. See what you think. So we're super, super excited. Awesome. And, I Oh, there's more? Well, and maybe we'll have a special something for your audience, Lou. Which I guess I should mention. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> That's like, see, now, Tim, again, uh, this is me as a friend to you. It's like telling somebody, like, listen, maybe I'll have something romantic for you, but then again, maybe I won't. So no, we're, we're, going, we're going to put together to celebrate 
the return of celebrations in print, we do have a special coupon, which Lou will include in the show. Notes, I will put it in, but she will, will include it. in the show notes. Um, <laughs> That we're going to offer all you guys 20% off of a new subscription. And we also, we're going to run a little contest where a select few winners that we'll choose will win in addition to a free year of Celebrations Magazine. We'll put together a special gift package of our uh, Nighttime Memories hardcover book we just did, um, some of our recent back print issues, and some other goodies that we'll throw in there. Um, some booklets of perhaps illuminations or the main street electrical parade, how I miss you um, and that sort of thing. But Lou will put all of the details on all of this in his show notes and share <laughs> with everybody. But uh, we want to offer this to everybody because we, we just want to share it with everybody because we're so excited and hope you are too. Awesome. I, I certainly will go to www.radio.com, click on this week's podcast. You'll find links and all of the details once Tim gives them to me there. Once, once, <laughs> once. <laughs> we have to figure out what the coupon code is, actually. <laughs> Lou is my. Tim friend. is a cuddler 20. Uh, we'll, f- we'll figure it out. Check the show notes. That's a for... little long. We'll, we'll shorten it up yeah, to something yeah. much, much, much nicer. So. Well, look, Tim Foster. I, I am so grateful for you being here. We're going to have to come back and talk about romantic resorts and rooms yep. and restaurants and, and yep. places to dine. But the, the takeaway, Tim, is that romance is still not dead, nor should it ever be. No way, my friend. No way. What's the most romantic? Oh, top 10 romantic Disney songs. <gasps> Oh, man. I'm going to have to think about that. I know. i am got to write this down, Romantic Disney. I was so even going to mention top 10 romantic films because I don't know if I said this on the show. I mentioned to you. I watched Endgame again last night and cried. Very romantic. Six, six Very more romantic. times. What better way to um, have a romantic moment than cuddle up watching your favorite movie, especially one where you'll cry a little bit. I'm a crier hey, too. Just so I know. cry it. I'm cry a hugger. Ralph, I'm a so. crier. I'm a sentimental kind of guy. So yeah, what can yeah, I tell yeah. you? I wear it. Uh, I wear my heart on my sleeve proudly. Uh, you're hopeless, but that's why we love you. That's the power of love. It's time for our trivia question of the week, where you can test your knowledge of Disney, Marvel, or Star Wars trivia history. Maybe I'll play a random sound clip or quote a line from a show or an attraction and ask you to identify where in the world you've heard it. If you think you know the answer, you can enter via our online forum for a chance to win a Disney prize package. Of course, before we get to this week's question, we're going to go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So right now, as I am recording this, we collectively as a WW Radio community should be on a Marvel Day at Sea cruise. Considering what time I'm recording this, I should probably be in Enchanted Garden enjoying a little bit of a tuna tower or three tuna towers. It doesn't matter. I'm really sad, but I'm also excited because we're loving everything that's going on on Disney Plus with WandaVision. And that's why it was not only my Disney Plus pick of the week on our live show, Wednesday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern at www.radiolive.com. But I wanted to ask you a Marvel-related question because I was in, and still am, a Marvel-related mood. And as I asked you last week, actor Chris Evans plays Steve Rogers, known as Captain America. But did you know that Chris Evans once played another Marvel superhero in a different non-Marvel Cinematic Universe series of films and your, an- your question last week was to tell me what other Marvel superhero has Evans played on film? You could have given me his real name, his identity, his hero name, whatever it might be. Thanks to the hundreds of you who entered, got this one correct. And know, of course, that Chris Evans was Johnny Storm, also known as the Human Torch, in the 2005 Fantastic Four adaptation, as well as the 2007 sequel, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Uh, Human Torch, Johnny Storm was another Stan Lee, Jack Kirby character from the Fantastic Four comic books. And his origin story was he was exposed to these uh, cosmic rays while on a spacecraft along with the rest of the Fantastic Four team. 
Now, there was also a 2015 Fantastic Four reboot film, which we really don't talk about, where the Human Torch was actually played by Michael B. Jordan, who also played in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as the villain Eric Killmonger in Black Panther. But I took all the correct entries, randomly selected one, and again, last week you were playing for a top copy of my Disney Interviews book, my 102 Ways to Save Money for and at Walt Disney World book, all seven of my virtual audio walking tours of the history, details, secrets, and stories of Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World. All those, by the way, you can find at www.radio.com on sale now, as well as on Amazon. And last week's winner, randomly selected, is David Webb from Rowley, North Carolina. So, David, congratulations. I will get your prize package out you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. So what we're going to do right here is go back, way back, back into time, as I ask you to tell me what celebrity helped to officially open and dedicate Walt Disney World's Pirates of the Caribbean attraction in 1973. Now, kids, and by kids, I mean anybody who's listening who's under 40, you may have to ask your parents about who this person is, but tell me what celebrity helped to officially open and dedicate Walt Disney World Pirates of the Caribbean in 1973. You have until Sunday, January 31st at 11.59 p.m. Eastern to go to www.radio.com, click on this week's podcast, use the online form there. And again, this week, you're going to play not just for the Disney Interviews book, not for all of my digital products, including the 102 Ways and the audio tours, but I'm also going to send you a brand new WW Radio, not available in stores, Cobalt Blue Mug, the crowd oohs and ahs. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in this and every week. I hope you had fun, learned something new, maybe brought a little bit of happiness and positivity and Disney magic to your day and your week. Don't forget about our question of the week. Tell me, what is your favorite place, space, or romantic thing to do in Walt Disney World? You can be part of the community and conversation. Not only answer that question, but talk about this week's show and anything in the Disney, Marvel, or Star Wars universe in the WW Radio Clubhouse. That is our group at Facebook at www.radio.com slash clubhouse. You can also connect with me at social. I am at Lou Mangiello, primarily on Instagram, as well as LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, a little bit on Pinterest. If you have a question, you can email me, lou at www.radio.com. I will answer on an upcoming listener email show or call the voicemail. Be heard on the air at 407-900-9391. Don't forget to join me every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern for our live video broadcast and chat on Facebook where you are part of the conversation and the content. I talk not only about this week's show, what's going on in Walt Disney World. I share my top five live. We discuss our Disney Plus pick of the week, your questions, calls, trivia, and more. Again, every Wednesday, 7.30 at www.radiolive.com. Be sure and check out my 10 new eBay items beginning and ending every Sunday night from my personal collection of Disney and Marvel and Star Wars that I've been collecting literally since I was a kid. Visit www.radiolive.com slash eBay. My huge and heartfelt thanks to everyone who was part of the WW Radio Nation family. I sincerely appreciate your love, support, and friendship and help, and I love being able to give back to you each and every month. If you want to find out how you can not only help the show, but get exclusive rewards every month, including new rewards coming probably next month, you can visit www.radio.com slash support. Don't forget that a portion of your contribution, which starts at as little as a dollar a month, does go to our Dream Team project to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. I want to thank some new, new and longtime members, including Linda Umbright, Jeremy Schappel, Anne McCardle, Jessica Manter, and Robert Marshall. Again, to find out more and be part of the nation, visit www.radionation.com. And I also want to try and help you turn what you love into what you do. So if you are overwhelmed or stressed or feel alone or don't know where to start or just how to take your business or idea to the next level, I want to let you know that my new mastermind group is launching on February 2nd. Limited to just six members who are committed to building their business and brand and improving their life, the group includes weekly group video calls, one-on-one calls with me, brainstorming, accountability, resource sharing, problem solving, and lots more. It's a great way to get focused, to get tools, create 
learn, and more. To find out more, visit lumangelo.com slash coaching. I also posted in the clubhouse on Facebook a little bit more about the group. Again, our new group starts February 6th, so if you're interested, please reach out to me again by visiting lumangelo.com slash coaching. When you are ready to visit Walt Disney World, whether it be for a romantic getaway or not, please visit our friends over at MEI and Mouse Fan Travel over at mousefantravel.com. They will give you the best possible prices, all available discounts. Most important, they will give you an incredible level of personal service, and it all comes at zero cost to you. Again, reach out to them at mousefantravel.com and tell them Lou sent you. And finally, if you like the show, and I hope that you do, all I ask is that you please help spread the word, tell a friend, share out on social a link to this or your favorite episode on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or just the www.radio.com website. Also, if you can, take just a couple of seconds. Please rate and review the show over on Apple Podcasts. It is incredibly helpful. doesn't take a lot of time. I want to thank some recent reviewers like Furniture Shopper from the United States who says, this feels like home. This has been a joy to listen to over the past few months. I can't imagine Lou is nearly as friendly as he comes off, but don't. But I don't think I'll be wrong if we ever meet. I promise you, Furniture Shopper, I will remember this email, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. I really think this guy is the real deal. I am. This is who I am. I promise you. You can't fake it on a podcast. Listening to his back catalog has really helped me through some tough places, and I can't imagine how I could get through this without Lou. He is the Mr. Rogers of podcasting. I can't imagine a better compliment than that. So thank you. Um, Edit, I can't computer and don't know how to change my name, but you can call me Furniture Shopper or Jeff, whatever you are feeling today. Jeff, Furniture Shopper, I love you, man. I cannot wait to meet you in real life, hopefully one day soon in Walt Disney World. Thank you for your thoughts and sentiments and for taking the time to rate and review the show. I have been called many things in my days. Some good, some not so good. The Mr. Rogers of podcasting may be the one that that swells my heart more than anything else. So thank you again for that. Finally, most importantly, I hope that you enjoyed the show this and every week. I hope it has brought some happiness and some positivity to you. Maybe even inspires you to be a little bit better and to go out there and to choose the good, not just in Disney, but in everything and every one that you encounter. And more importantly, you don't just choose to find the good for yourself, but that you be the good for others as well. And I mean it when I say, if there's ever any way that I can help you to show my gratitude for all that you have done for me just by being here, please just reach out to me and let me know. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. I hope to see you and speak with you this coming Wednesday night at WW Radio Live. So until next time, See ya. Good evening, WCDW Radio family. It's Elizabeth from Massachusetts. Just finished listening to the most recent episode about the best of the Festival of the Arts. I am super bummed out that I won't be able to get to experience it in any way, shape, or form this year. But, Lou, I actually love that you do these live reviews and that I got to experience it in some sort of way through you and your friends. Um, super well done episode. Um, I am dying to have one of those, uh, Japan Pavilion rock garden with the chocolate rocks and the bean mousse concoction. That is so cool. And I saw your image on Instagram. I was like, that is just so artistic and looks yummy and cool. Uh, so if anyone who's a local or anyone that's going to be there soon, uh, have one for me and know that Elizabeth from Massachusetts is munching right along with you. Uh, what I would do to walk around Epcot right now and just snack some snacks and drink some drinks. Um, hope you're all doing well. Stay positive. Stay optimistic. Hope everyone's having a great um, inauguration day. Um, I hope everyone's having a great week. Can't believe it's already Wednesday. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their week and smile a lot and tell people those things for them. Um, thankful for all of you, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's Christine Morrison from Flowertown, Pennsylvania. I'm back home in the awesome 30-degree uh, weather, and I don't like it. Um, anyway, I'm calling. I don't even know what to say first. So I'm just going to focus on one thing. This was um, this trip I just took um, was my first time experiencing the Festival of the Arts, and I absolutely loved it. 
Uh, my daughter actually took a bunch of food pictures for her photography class, and she's going to do a little project about the Festival of the Arts for her photography class, which so I thought that was really cool. So it was fun going around with her, taking, you know, buying food and taking pictures of it before we ate it. So our favorite thing was the Mexico, everything from Mexico. I was not adventurous enough to try the carrot martini. Maybe I will do that next time. But the chili relleno and the pork belly and the pomegranate martini and the chocolate taco, they were all amazing. And I actually really, really enjoyed the ratatouille. I thought that it was a nice little vegetable dish. I loved it. I also went into Cave de del Tequila in Mexico, which is my favorite pavilion, and I had a couple martinis from there and uh, loved that place. Love it. The detail in there is just so cozy and cute, and oh, I just love it. Anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to say because I could go on for days and days and days about my trip. Biggest highlight was meeting Lou at the boathouse. We actually met once before Lou in Pennsylvania. Um, I came to meet up with you when you were up there doing a talk a couple of years ago. So um, anyway, the boathouse is as good as he says it is, everybody. We had a wonderful, wonderful meal there. Everybody, make someone smile. I will see you all in the box. And right now I'm catching up on my podcast, and I'm way behind on the pick of the week. i got to get that Disney Plus fired up and catch up. Talk to you all later. Bye. What I meant to say was... Wait a minute. Don't I know you from somewhere? Yes. Yes. I'm George. George McFly. I'm your density. I mean... Your destiny. I was hiding under your porch because I love you. Can I stay? <laughs>